Awesome. Awesome. Sounds great. There Sounds you. great. All right. Well, thank you again. I appreciate your time and your patience and your attention. And hopefully we can do a little like really interesting sort of work in this class. Um, I'm I made go you ahead post and... already, so you're good and you can share and yeah. Awesome. Sounds like great news. So I'm going to pull up my um and i am going to share because there are a couple of resources that um i'm going to use as a demonstration to really bring us into the work that we're going to be doing today so uh, 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 and oh it's gonna make me log on damn it curses okay so sorry guys, uh, the, my Google account is forcing me uh, to log on. And I just redid my passwords to like really complex passwords and i'm like can i recall my really complex password <laughs> uh, which apparently i can't because it's like <laughs> that's not correct you're wrong so all right so let me tell my browser that i have my phone and that it can tell my phone all right Yes. And then guess what? It'll be like, oh, you have this thing. One of your eight digit damn it backup codes. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Becky. All of the things. Backup codes. Let's see. Ooh. I may or may not have them. But I do have, um, damn it, I don't, I don't know what I did with the backup codes. <sighs> uh, all right, I don't have that material then. Okay, so you can, uh, I, will, I will manage that off offline. What's up? Did you put it inside of the Google Doc no. drive that's on the website? No, oh. no, I didn't. And, and it's okay. You, you know, the, the real material that I want to share begins right here. So um, yeah. you, can, you can take a look at this, and this will have more context in just a moment. Now, the, oh, you know what I can do? I can have, yes, I can have Mama. Oh, bitch, we figure out our shit. There we go. Look at that, being adults, adulting. <laughs> um, new project right here. Awesome, yes. One week. So this is week five and we're moving on to the concept of seven. One of the things that I was talking about with um, Alex that I think is important to really keep in mind for this. And one of the things that I would have put on the suggested reading list is a book by Israel Regardi, E-I-S-R-E-A-L-R-E-G-A-R-D-I -E -E is his name, Israel Regardi. And he's a, he is a god of contemporary um, ceremonial craft he's written many 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 books um the the one that of course is going to relate immediately to the work that we're going to be doing today is called the middle miller middle pillar and the book describes a ritual in which we place ourselves at the center of our own experience of the universe as its awareness as its eye as its framer and shaper. And um, the uh, Israel Regardi book on tarot. Now the book on tarot that um, he wrote is specifically important to me and, to, and for sharing with everyone else is 
that it um, the introduction of the book most accurately describes the truths about how these systems work, these systems of divination as a mirror to the soul. And that is that they are highly, highly complex and 100% arbitrary. And so give the universe the option to use a very broad means of communication with you. And I cannot find it. So when I find it, I will post the, I'll post it for the bibliography. Okay, we don't need it for class. However, it would have been nice to have. Um, and it, this, is, this is really some of the most important news flash for any worker of uh, magic at all. Number one, always, always, always journal your results and journal your work so that you can see what you did, what you thought, how it responded, whether it worked or not. You can chuck it out the door. You can try it again. See if there were different influences that managed it. The more detail you pack into that as far as the numerology, the day of the week, the astrology, um, how, how, what was going on in your personal life like life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You'll begin to see that the um, means of communication back towards you from your own God soul is highly complex and involved in every single detail of your life. And you can begin actually mind mapping some of these connections when you journal enough and see enough externally. The same thing is true about this idea of the arbitrariness and complexity of a communication system like tarot. And um, Israel really draws that out in the clearest of ways. And that is that don't tie the divine's hands when it comes to communicating with you, right? The hardest thing for us to hear is the voice that we don't want to hear. So allow yourself to hear a panoply of voices, leave none of them out, and really, here's, here's the hot scalding tea in the face, psh, right? And that is, if you want to make spiritual progress, you need to start untelling yourself stories that limit your ability and capacity to expand self. I love it. Yeah. And really, that's, that's the essence of what Israel is talking about in the introduction to that book. And I'll get you the name. But um, that, you know, we, that we as magical workers choose these systems very specifically to not tie the divine's hands in speaking to us. To give them the broadest possible vocabulary with which to do it. Okay, now with sigilization, of course, that broad vocabulary we're narrowing, narrowing for the sake of our own ability to kind of organize our thoughts and present them in a coherent way. Um, but the deeper work of connotation is all like, you, you don't limit yourself to any single symbol set, to any single idea or thing. Um, any medium, um, you know, the, I've already, with just the castings that I've done, I've had a, a particular song played four times after the second casting. And then, you know, what, okay, what's it about this song? Fine, pull it out, look at the lyrics. Oh my God, look at this, 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 and this. And that happened at work like two days ago. And, <laughs> right? So that's, the mystery that we're trying to pull out. Now, the mystery for today that um, I really want to kind of bring us back to, and I'm super excited. I was telling Alex that I was, you know, I told Jade, we finally got to do the number seven. She's like, oh my God, are you going to tell them all you're a fairy? And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, I think the cat's kind of out of the bag with that one as far as them knowing, but <laughs> as far as talking about fairy, I may. So um, just know that, you know, some of the work that we've already done is a little bit fairy flavored. However, when, when you start getting to systems of seven, you, which other than just classic, right, astrology and the seven major planets, you really start getting into um, putting yourself in um, uh, the center of a highly complex 
universe in balanced harmony or complete destruction <laughs> seven <laughs> and you know seven and five are really tough numbers in tarot for a reason seven is the confluence of three and four the most stable structures on their own but when they come together they actually form like the number of man meets the number of woman and together these two form a synergistic outcome that nobody can anticipate whatsoever and um, when you force that through everything else of your work right in meditation then it's remember i said you know everyone in a spiritual path is completely broken and you pour enough water into that vessel and you're going to see all the cracks well all the cracks really start showing at seven and one of the things that i'm going to be like bringing us into with that if i can pull up any of my material for today recording in progress Yes, recording is in progress. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> ah, there we go. I, I have, have my, my phone, phone going and my computer, so I can see and hear because my speakers are wacky. <laughs> so there may be a feedback. The best thing that we can do to um, mitigate the... What are you using your speakers for? Yeah, yeah let, let me, me, let let me, me just, just stop. Hang, hang on. on. No, no, it's okay. I can just mute That's the okay. one that you're not using your speaker on, and then it'll stop echoing. Okay. Are you using your speaker on your phone or your computer? On, on my, my phone. phone. Phone? Got it. Hold on one sec. Uh, participants. Oh, I know what she's doing. Yes. How do I? Oh, you're the host. You have to do it. Can you click on Marsha's okay. uh, computer? Icon. Yep. What do I need to do? Um, so if you click on participants and then you click on Marsha or even the three little dots right above her head in the picture, yep, that's right. Um, then mute the one that doesn't say Marsha's iPhone. Oh, yeah. all right. Yes. Okay. Participants there. And I can pull this over here. And then there's Marsha's iPhone, which we want to mute. Awesome. Uh, oh, that wait. should uh, fix yeah. all of the. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that should fix all of the feedback, and we should only be hearing you through your phone. Okay. Try it, Marsha. Yep. yep. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. Yay. Yay. So um, that that leads us to where we are, right? Um, number seven. You, you already you see in the material these are valid roles for adversity. Um, oh no 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 no. That's here we go. Yes. Reaching for stability. That's right. So the confluence of three and four, the synergies that are created there and reaching for stability. Now, this, this is where seven is gonna be fun for us, right? I want everyone to just kind of like think about Alex, Marsha, how do you orient yourself in space and time? How? Oh, I... I don't. I'm just okay. <laughs> well, we're going to give you a, a methodology to do it right now. And many magicians use this sort of technique, technique to ground, but that's not what we're going to be doing. What we are going to be doing is exploring the uh, breadth and reach of your own um, conscious awareness and uh the the paths of your influence out from this exact moment so we're going to use point geometry to actually do that and uh it's super simple to locate anything in 3d space you need six points and the seventh tells you where they are now i'm going to show you how that works Everything really does, you, you can draw a line through everything from top to bottom. So from above the object, all the way to below the object, intersecting the object. And let's go ahead and give ourselves the object, right? Let's say 
This is you, this little diamond, right? Awesome. And um, the second way is we do, we take a horizontal line, right? So imagine this is actually like the ground that you're standing on. And that may move, move through you from behind you to in front of you. So if your back is to the sun, which is setting in the West, let's see if we can make that a little bit bigger. Right, then we have, that's in the West, awesome. What's over here, anyone? East. That's right, <laughs> absolutely. So we already, have, we already know that we're looking at above and we're looking at our below. So, where the above meets the below, where the east meets the west, all in you, right? We still don't know where you are, not until the last line is drawn. Any guesses? South, north. Uh-huh. Now, this easy orienting tip, right? The intersection of these lines, the seven points that are actually help you like discover where in space and time any given thing is, is it's not just a concept. It's not just an idea. It's an actual space, it's an actual place, it's actually you, right? One of the things I always say about witchcraft is that the devil is in the details. And these are the details, these seven points. Now in fairy craft, we talk about them as the guardian above, heaven shiner, the guardian below, fire in the earth. And we talk about them in the, or orienting ourselves from, of course, north to east to south and to west, with Black Mother or Earth, right? With Starfinder or the Guardian in the East or uh, Fire or our uh, uh, particular unnamed names, the names that shall remain unnamed, right? Because you will hear them. <laughs> Anyways, so the gods and guardians are tutelary uh, gods or entities in the south, right? And in the west, our lovely watery aqueous mother, right, who gushes with emotion, emotionality, and teaches flow. We are going to step ourselves into the center of these lines. And we're going to really look at what are the aspects of these powers, the powers of the East, of course, of intellection, understanding and memory, right? Flashes of insight and intuition of the South, right? Our passionate pursuits and our drives and our vitality. Um, in the West, all of those that I mentioned, our connection with flow, how we resist or how we surrender, um, the, our emotionality and literally the liquids in our bodies, right? Um, and then North, the material basis, your bones, your, your muscles, your, your physical nature, the food that we eat, um, the ground that we stand on, the objects that we manipulate in trying to make a living in the world. Um, and caring for our people. And then above, everything that is empyrene or heavenly. Ideas of the divine. 
our own highest ideals. And this is where it really gets tricky, right? Below us, our deepest fears and most suppressed aspects of self. And as we know from the other suggested reading piece that I would give for today, and that's the bones, there is a pirate PDF version of it that's available online. Um, the bones was part of a mystery school that is now belly up it used to be in, um, in the middle of Missouri, 700 acres. Now it's dog uh, rescue. But uh, these gals created an intentional community and mystery school. And their, um, their encapsulation of the wisdom that they gleaned from leading this intentional uh, community over years um, has been distilled into a book called The Bones. You can get a copy of it, easy enough, just Google The Bones, Diana's Grove, Mystery School, and you'll find it. Um, it's insanely gorgeous, and not in a poetic sense, in a very pragmatic, practical sense, placing you and yourself on squarely the map and placing yourself squarely on the map with other people in a community and what each person brings to the community and what that means and how you organize communities so that it's successful towards a mission and with a concept of not only growth but sustainability. Now deepest fears Greatest aspirations, so deepest fears really are the things that we push against. Oh, that's right, I was getting there. So <laughs> as is written about this influence in the bones, we, we as an individual, just like communities, can only evolve as fast as our most resistant member or our most resistant part of self. We can only evolve as fast as the most resistant member or part of self. In other words, those parts of us, which they'll throw monkey wrenches in, they'll sabotage, they'll find ways to pull the plug, to disconnect that, to take this offline, to find other, other things and other, other, other things and other, 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 other things that can get in the way of and that we invite to help us trip ourselves up with the goals that we want to achieve. And most of the work that we show up for is really the work of surrendering, being quiescent, being passive and receptive. What we can do is set up an intent. We can give it forward momentum, which is what today's class is going to be about. And then we can feed it but that's about it. Just like with making kids, you can really aim for a cheerleader, but you may not get one. <laughs> Sorry, that's the way kids work. That's the way magic works as well. The more precise you can get with your magical intent, the better your results will be. And most people get shitty results from magic because they write 10,000 things and disorganized ideas on a piece of paper and hand that mess to God and God has to decipher it before she can manifest it for you, make a thousand copies and hand it back. The best thing you can do is to find from beginning to end with crystal clarity, the absolute outcome you're looking for in precisely the way you want it. And then hand, a th hand that to God and have God make a thousand copies and hand it back. And you have to do the footwork. Now, part of the footwork, right? The um, tagline for today's what for today was systems of seven and creating a stable structure. Now, the way that we create a stable structure is this right here, right? And in our tradition, the cube is the symbol that represents uh, our fundamental connection with this sort of um, pragmatic placing of self in every moment. And remember, I've said this before, 
who is the clear sounding bell in the room? Who has the greatest responsibility to own the space? Who's the witch in the room who walks in, bends and alters and creates a space that must happen? You, right? To do that, you have to have all of your faculties online. And that's part of what the cube is all about. Right, having that firm foundation, having your faculties up and online. Just like the best way that you can do yoga is not to be tensed up, it's to be relaxed and deep breathing, right? To be stretchy and bendy and yet firm, activated and yet resolved, right? Relaxed, passive, and resolved, both meeting each other in a single activity that flows in a predictable way through a series. So this series of seven, right? It now, of course, your sigil, any seven lines, but right today, we're gonna talk a little bit about this idea of what are, and I would invite you to write down some of these questions. With the work that we're doing, what is your zenith, your highest, possible ideal goal and outcome. And this can be part of your big chief work, right? Out of all magic, what is the best possible case scenario? And then we're gonna look at the opposite face of that in the great below. And we're, so we're going to rise our spirit up into heaven and pull down stardust and possibility from the universe and power and influence from the star goddess herself, right? Qua Coralina, all things seen and unseen. And that's going to be, what is our highest ideal here? And we're going to flow that through point seven down into point four. And we're gonna look at what are our deepest fears, anxieties, insecurities over the same work. So we can see who's our ally, who's our guiding star, and who are our deepest demons, the things that we have to appease. Notice I don't say solve, exorcise, dissolve, destroy, no, appease. How can they come into consensus with the rest of our consciousness to consent to forward evolution so that we get buy-in from our most resistant part in achieving this work? So we're going to look at what is my highest ideal here. We're going to look at what are my deepest fears here. In the north, we're going to look at what are the physical goals that we have to achieve to create fertile soil for this possibility. In other words, what underpinning situations must be true in the real world for us to manifest our goals. Okay. We're also going to look at what is our right attitude in achieving it in the East, point three. In the South, we're gonna look at what is our true desire? Do we even want this thing? Is this a thing that you know is an idea for a class or is this something that I really need and want and desire in my life? What energy am I willing to flow into it? What energy do I expect to flow back out of it into me? What's the exchange? What's the flow? What's the sacrifice? And are we all willing to make it? In the West, what's changing now? And what needs to change? And lastly, we're going to look at the black heart of innocence. Oh, yes. The, nothing so gorgeous as the black heart of children and animals. 
right? Which I think is rather pertinent, given given uh, Marsha's current uh, <laughs> current role there in the household, right? And what Victor Anderson meant by that? Hi, hi, how you doing? What are you doing? You look all skeptical. Yes, you do. Of course you do. You should, young lady. Exercise firm judgment. So um, what Victor meant by that was, you know, black as in all color, emblematic of all things mashed into one, that there is a spontaneity. And though there may not be an ethical approach, the, the approach of children, animals, is not without reason or sense. It's about self-ism, not selfishness. Okay, so the last point, the point seven, we call it the black heart of innocence. Um, it is the the I think of myself as a proscenium arch. If do you do, do you guys know what a proscenium is? No, Marcia does not. So a proscenium is the arch that the curtains are hung on in a theater. So it's the separation, mental and physical, between an imaginary space where all things can happen and come into a place of communal observation and the ideas are suddenly up for discussion or consideration. And the actual physical world that we live in, right? So we audience sit out here in the real world and we look through the magic window of the proscenium arch into every possibility occurring and happening. And we get to, as a culture, view through that magic window, all things that were never considerable before, right? They can be brought into the light of conscious awareness and consideration and judgment by a community. And that's the really critical part, right? Well, I am the proscenium arch. I am the seventh point. I am the witch in the room, and it is my responsibility to coordinate the energies of the East, of air, of history, memory, ideation, and intention. The energies of my passionate investment toward whatever goal in the West and my flow with or against my resistance from or my surrender to the adaptation and changes that are all moving through me and the work. And what is the physical or material basis in the North that must happen? I, as the seventh point, am the witch. I am the the center and the circumference of the magic circle, which is now more than a circle. Because a circle would just encompass, encompass the north, east, south, and west. This is a true sphere. It's interesting, the work that has been done like this by other occult um, explorers, um, let's take Thorn Coyle, for instance. She uses this concept with augmenting it with the, with the idea of the Merkaba as a vehicle to move into through our own past, futures, and presence, both real and possible, right? Other mystics have used technology like this simply to And this is the hard one, make a difference here and now. The only place you can, the only time you can is right now, right here. And that's the power of the seventh point. It is your awareness of your own process and of harmonizing all of these energies and activities and objects and people and situations 
while never forgetting your highest ideal grounded firmly in your resistance to and surrender to appeasing your most resistant fearful parts. Where there's fear, there's power. And that's straight from the spiral dance. Thank you very much, Starhawk. So this is the seven, the great and mighty Nephilim of the past mystic past, the seven who taught humanity all things from how to put that makeup on your eye, girl, to how to build weapons of mass destruction, to how to use coins and booze, to how to, how to, how to educate yourself, to how to, to magic, to engineering, to spa services, So the tall ones, the, oh, I can't remember what they're called. For the Sumerians, um, they were the, the Anunnaki, the, but they were the George judges or lords of the Anunnaki. And um, the seven riders or the um, seven judges of the core or the right over and over and over and over again, all of the ancients had some iteration of an understanding of this simple concept of the above, the below and the four quadrants of the world and represented them as wheels, as towers, as doors, as any number of objects. And today we want to tap into that and place ourselves very firmly at the center at point seven, sink our feet into our deepest fears, rise our heads into our highest goal and ambitions, ambitions, reach into our memory, our own passions, take a look at our material basis and challenges and how much drive and momentum we have towards achieving our goals as we draw our seven lines. That's why I said in the Facebook, the only thing we need to really understand today is Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz at that moment where she has full self-awareness, full self-gnosis. She understands her power in her world and clicks her heels three times and says, there's no place like home. And guess where she goes? Home. Now, I'm not saying that this is Dorothy. I'm not saying that it's like I'm, the metaphor is real. <laughs> right? But that is the power of this concept of the above meeting the below, of the behind meeting the before, the past and the future, the side by side, my allies and my enemies all meeting in the black heart, okay? That said, um, I'm ready to draw some lines. I think uh, someone, Alex, already has hers for this week because she's an ambitious little <laughs> witch over there. <laughs> Um, I actually, <clears throat> I'm not able to link it because since I'm not, or since I'm recording on my computer, it won't let me go grab it from Facebook. Um, so if one of you could go into the Facebook group and copy the link and paste it into the chat, that would be amazing. <laughs> okay, let's see. Marsha, do you have access? I've, I'm in the middle of like issues with logging on and changing passwords and unfortunate circumstances with access oh here marcia let me do this for you actually i can make it super oh. easy hold on there i i didn't know i was muted <laughs> okay what do i need to do i'm gonna make it super easy for you i'm gonna 
paste a link into the group chat. Can you take that link and paste it right here into the Zoom chat? Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, so you're pasting it in Messenger chat? Yeah, I'm gonna paste okay. it in the big. And then I think you should just be able to copy and paste that picture into the chat here. And it should give a link. If not, I'll copy a link for you. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> How do I, I am a techno bonehead. This is like the first computer I've owned in 25 years. How do I view more like the rest of my desktop so I can, do you know what I mean? Um, if you just, there should be like a minimize button on Zoom. Um, if you click. Oh, exit full screen. There yeah. we go. Okay. Are you able to copy and paste that? Um, um, I believe so. Hang on. Let's say forward more. Copy link. Yes. Okay, yes. and then go here. Oh. Oh, where did it, where did it go? I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Okay, I don't. <laughs> I don't see where where the Zoom went. It says post attendee. Oh, do you see a little picture in the corner of somebody's face? Do you see, like, a, like, can you see any of us? No, I don't. All I see is Zoom scheduling made easy. And then it might be down I'll, I'll on figure our... it out. Hang on one sec. Let me just, Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. No, I, no, I feel like a bonehead because I don't know what I'm. Oh, no, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. Hey, all right. <laughs> I did it. I did yeah. it. I did it. Oh, good. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> yep. There it is. Awesome. Okay. I should probably mute myself. I don't think there's any need to. So um, we're, oh, yeah, I see unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to, since my material, I have done what I need to with the share, I can stop the share and hand that back. And Alex, if you'll grab the control and ball on that, and you can go ahead and show us oh, sure. your material, because I still have the logon problem from this okay. PC. Let's see, reclaim host. Okay. Yes. So... Back to Zoom. Cool. So here's mine. And so basically yes, yes, yes. through everything that I was writing and journaling and all the different sigils that I have made now, I realized that um, the aspect that I was really trying to change about myself is also something that I kind of like about myself. And I didn't want to change it because I thought that there was something wrong with me always kind of being scatterbrained. Okay. It was that everybody else has a serious problem with me being super scatterbrained. Slash, it ends up <laughs> not being super great for like the commitments that I make. But anyway, so I was trying to think about why I really wanted to change this about myself. <laughs> and like, what were the big reasons why me being so disorganized and <clears throat> not super accountable sometimes, like why that bothers me so much. And so I was kind of trying to deconstruct things that had nothing to do with organization and that had more to do with the big overlaying things in my life that were causing me to be disorganized and that were causing me to be so flaky or to 
not hold myself accountable to commitments that I make and things like that, or even just forgetful and forgetting everything and what causes me to be that way. And I realized that the reason that I'm that way is just because I get so interested and so passionate about so many things all at the same time mm-hmm. that it's impossible for me to actually mm-hmm. be able to put my one thing done. Yes. Yeah. And to like put all of my effort and everything into one thing because I'm so interested in all of the things. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> once again, that kind of led me towards um, something that I like about myself, that even though that's very chaotic that I don't necessarily mind that I am so chaotic, Um, that it has caused me to be very intelligent, to learn a lot of things, to meet a lot of people, to travel to a lot of places, is because I never stop moving and doing so many things all at the same time. And that Mm -hmm. I don't hate that, but it causes issues because of, you know, being disorganized in the world that we live in and not holding yourself accountable to your commitments can make a lot of people angry. Because <laughs> adulting. Because <laughs> adulting. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, it led me to meditate on this, which is what I wrote below this symbol and the sigil, and then also to create this. This is kind of just what came to me after thinking about all of those things. Um, and I'm going to read it from my paper because it's kind of hard for me to read it on the screen. Yeah. I will stop trying to force myself to transform and instead I will start trying to understand the transformations I am already going through. It's like you're quoting. (laughs) And so that just kind of, that's what I decided my whole thing for casting was going to be is trying to understand what's already, what I'm already transforming into rather than trying to force Mm -hmm. myself to transform into something different. Mm-hmm. I think that's amazing. And I think you're amazing. <laughs> All of the things that you do just blow me away. And I, and I get it. I, that resonates with me so much because I want to learn everything too. And everything is just so interesting. And it's like when I was doing, you know, uh, Pikes Peak Community College and I was doing all the classes of yours and then I fell behind over there and I'm like, but I really want to stay here. I don't want to do the school thing. And I uh-huh. totally get it. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, much. I'm amazing. so happy that you're realizing so some of the same things. Thank you so much. <laughs> I do. You I do. do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's really awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's great. You know, and and that degree of self gnosis, I think, is really kind of what we're aiming at. So let's really see if you can co opt some of that work because your work here is not done, young lady. Um, <laughs> And see, okay, so from the perspective of what is my above, what is my below, right? What is the history that led me to this point? What is the future? Who are my allies and who are my enemies? What are my own deepest fears that will try and sabotage me? And What are my hoped for outcomes, right? Because you've stated the problem, Mm -hmm. right? The problem is the tension between the expectation and the outcome. The problem is between the expectation and the outcome. Yeah. Right? So awesome. Take what's real, expand into your own stability, know your own chaos, And just like we can see here, you've got forward momentum. You've got upward and downward momentum. You have the flow of the water and you have an elusive, beautiful goal ahead, right? Mm -hmm. Already just in your sigil. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I would invite you to like, you know, sit with that with your journaling and with your casting really, you know, deepen into this idea that, you know, you can have the chaos. It serves a purpose, which it does. I think I've told you before, you know, I had a a art teacher once and 
you know, every, every teacher teaches you surprise lessons. You know, it's not the lesson in on page 23 that you wind up learning or walking away from. It's always some casual comment that happened, you know, off the cuff or on the side that suddenly you're like, oh my God, this human sees me and understands me in the deepest of possible ways and what I need at this moment, right? And they transform, they, you have the power to transform your entire life if you pay attention to those moments, you know? And they aren't necessarily all teachers, right? It could be the kid in the grocery store says something and suddenly you're like, oh my God, having an epiphany about the existential truth of your own crisis that's been keeping you from calling your mother. I don't know, whatever <laughs> it is, right? Taking the trash out, do your recycling, whatever it is, right? And um, I forget what I was saying. I was talking about accidental teachers. I was talking about keeping your own chaos, um, understanding it, yes, that degree of self-gnosis in this moment. And deepen into that for the sake of stability you know there are parts of this that are legit just saboteur period right as far as your like aimed for goal like in the long run right you can sabotage that up up one side and down the other and those are easy to do Right. As a matter of fact, we invite ourselves to sabotage all the time. So that'll be, part, you know, the sinking down into our deepest fears, anxieties, all the most resistant parts that are keeping us from the evolution or the surrender to the change. This is really where you're going to be able to like dig and pull out meat, girl. Right. And totally. make separate and make separating lines between expectation and outcome and where's the disconnect and is the disconnect really me totally yes <laughs> awesome 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 so Ooh, that's cool i know it is coming out pretty cool so my last casting of the eight sigil really got me to a place where I was able to recommit with my health journey and um, say, okay, you know, these are the things that really have to happen. You know, I have to, I have to get on board with my fucking calorie counting and I have to get this workout schedule locked down, bitch. And I've got, you know, get my water consumption up really understand snacking again and how I snack and how I sabotage with snacking, et cetera, et cetera. And um, get kind of get back on that horse. And it was perfect for it. Every single casting, there were no intrusions. There were no overlays. There was, there was no interference whatsoever. I got all the static and noise. Remember we were talking about shedding parts that are not useful all shed and gone and every single one of those castings was clear and clean and once it was cast it was gone and there were no like repercussions or ramifications there were no problems there were no echoes there were no mystical like bubblings up of other things that were in the way so it was awesome and of course it was a gorgeous sigil so it was a pleasure it was really pretty. I like that. Yeah, one. it was really a pleasure to cast. And, you know, um, I loved that I was able to, in the final uh, photo montage, get a, a very tiled feel with like broken angles in it that really kind of re represented the multivalent complexity of the issue, having to approach, you know, getting back on that weight loss and health journey is everything it's it's re you have to rearrange the structure of your day what you say yes to what you say no to um all of it right and um it was awesome it was really awesome and there were a bunch of things that i was doing that were really getting in my own way so it was effective at identifying those and then this one is really going to be deepening into the moment now what so this whole week is going to be an exercise in absolute presence to the moment. 
How about you, Marsha? You're going to put your pen to paper and draw seven lines and join us in the casting? Yes, I'm, I'm really confused, though. All of this is really new to me, so I don't really... And, I, and I've only been to the one other class. I want to learn more. I just, I don't know. Sure. Well, I'll walk you through it. Okay, cool. So you, ha you have your paper and you have a pen, right? Awesome. Perfect. You're going to make seven lines. Okay. Awesome. Now, so you can either let it be organic and put your, and see where it goes, or... You can really use this work and idea of standing in the stability of my own truth in the now, right? Of what are my highest ideals? What are my deepest fears? Who are my enemies and allies? What is the past and what is the future? And me, the witch, the most important part. So you can either start with those ideas and say each line represents a thing. Or you can say, I wonder how seven things would organize themselves if I dropped them like pixie sticks. Or you can approach this from, but it must be seven lines. That's it. Just seven lines. Uh, okay. Um, I had some of the questions. I, I missed a couple of them. Sure. Do you mind? Do you mind? Okay, so... Above is what is my my highest, the best case scenario, right? Yes, that's right. Um, and then below, what are my deepest fears? Yep, the things and preventing you from moving forward. Yep. What's preventing me? Okay. And then what's the third one? Because I didn't get that one. Okay, so you you think of it in terms of north, south, east, and yeah, west. Yeah, it's, it's actually the two, right? So you've got above one, below two. You've got oh, north, wrong. three, four, five. One, two, okay. Yeah, six, and then seven is the center is yourself. Okay, I got it. I think I got it, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Good. Let's, let's slow down and let's, let's get there together. Okay. So yeah, in the north, um, and you may not have the context for this. Um, in the neo pagan witchcraft traditions, I'm north is. I just gotta get her really quick. I'm listening. Of course. Oh, come on. There she is. You're okay. She's like, no, I'm not. You don't know nothing, Graham. No, I'm mom. Oh, you're mom. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, then she really believes that yeah, you don't know I'm nothing. Yeah, I'm with a one-year-old and a 23-year-old, so. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, so oh, good. North, north is one, and that's yep. everything heavenly, my highest good, right? And uh, that's above. So above is that. everything heavenly, all that's good. Uh -huh. And it, really your guiding star, right? Oh, and I don't know why. Okay, no, I get it. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, and that's why I say it takes seven points to really like pin down our location. <laughs> space five, right? Because it is, you you need latitude, longitude, and then you need horizon line, and th those the intersection of those three creates the seven, and it's just another way to kind of cognize how the harmony and the dance of earth, stability, healing, grounding, worldly things, dirt, etc., all the things that Alex has shared here on this basic page of the elements, right. Earth is typically associated in mystical traditions in the West with the North. However, all that really is, is a mnemonic, Marsha. It's just a way for you to kind of grab your head around and grapple these concepts of, right, what is the material basis? What are the actual deliverables that have to happen for this to be considered success, right? That's Earth. 
and the physical activities and actions and habits that have to create it, right? And then next, air, ideation, uh, intuition, um, intellection, um, group mind think, ESP, psychic abilities. Um, air is also like, go, go, our physical and literal breath. But again, think of that as a mnemonic for all of these um, shifts in your philosophy and worldview that have to happen for you to get there. Where is there, right? I think your last sigil, you did that gorgeous house. Isn't that right, Marsha? No, that was the other. Oh, that was a different student. Was a different what student. was the last one you did, Marsha? I, I think you I showed us. I haven't done one. Oh, you have not? You no, never got a chance to no, do one. I, nope. <laughs> okay, so this is the first that you're really approaching a sigil that you yeah, will cast. I, I wanted to do it and I set my intentions on doing it and I just never got around. No, that, that's fine. Then we start here. So you cannot make an error. You cannot, Marsha, you can't make an error. There will be no errors. Okay. You can't do this wrong because you can't do it wrong. There's no wrong to do. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. There so is <laughs> you taking seven lines, putting them on the page in a way that they have meaning to you. Dude. Oh, the baby. Honey, really, that's okay. You know, there are no distractions. There's just the world thinking itself and working itself out, right? And that's what's happening here too. And that's awesome and okay. It's all a part of this experience now and it has a place and it has power and it has a reason. So if you have to get up and walk away, I'm not offended and I won't be hurt. Okay. Honey, everyone has family. Everyone. I thought she was going to start screaming because she just hit her head so hard and she just didn't. So that was weird. She's well, like, that's because <laughs> she's a child, right? <laughs> and they're made of rubber, thank God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so knowing that there is no wrong thing that you can do, right? The only important aspect is really wrapping yourself around the idea of what it is that you need to manifest. Now, the concept of the week is, I think it's not un, not incoincidental that it's stability what in your life feels unstable let's work on it okay okay awesome so, so okay so with a, with a sigil you can incorporate art into it or it can yes just stick yes and you can put music art. and okay. art and collage and decoupage and so <laughs> greenware so and another one that i did so you can like connect the lines whatever way you can do swirly things you can do absolutely anything that you want. anything as long as there are seven lines okay yeah so once you have an idea about what you want to work with where do you where do you want to play what aspect do you want to play with what what part of your life do you want to work in right then go to your paper and jot it down in a single word right? On the back of the paper, jot it down. Okay, I'm going to work on this aspect. Awesome. And you will know that you have seven things that you want to journal around that. You're going to want to look at what is the highest ideal, what is the deepest fear, what materially has to happen, what mentally has to happen, what emotionally has to happen, And what gumption do I have to muster to do this? What does gumption mean? Like, mm, time in your day, energy, like passion. Strength. Like yeah, strength. strength. That's right. Yeah, because everything takes a commitment and okay. everything takes a sacrifice. Everything does, okay. right? And um, it, it takes the only person that can create the drive to make that sacrifice, the only person that can generate the interest to manifest that change is you. So that's that's the west right and that's the that's the trial of water and that's the lesson of water 
is, you know, we're the waves that both crush and cleanse, right? That overwhelm us and drown us in detail and yet buoy us up and we can't live without drinking, <laughs> right? You know, the, so these structural frameworks are just ideas in which to kind of chuck experience so that they make sense and you can organize that. But the truth is, you know, you can do, and that's what we're doing here, work with those. So when you, when you approach your work for the week, which is casting this sigil, your seven lines, three times using the technique, right? Then um, these are the elements that we're going to be pulling into the symbology of your lines. And you, oh, the only person that needs to know what symbols are in them is you. Okay. Yeah. So if you draw a straight line and that's, these are the rigid hard things I need to get around and a squiggly line. And that's how I'm going to get around them. And then here's another line, which is my highest ideal. Maybe that's a star. Maybe that's a something. And then here's my fears. And they look like a squiggly, scratchy little problem, whatever it is, right? However you do these lines, seven lines on the page. And these concepts of putting yourself in exactly where you are at this moment and that you are the element that organizes and harmonizes them. And it's your responsibility to cast them three times in this class. And that's it. And then observe and journal. That's the work. So you can't be wrong when you have the concept of the work that you want to manifest, jot it down in a single word, Flip your page over and make a line. That's your first line. Knowing that you can make no error. Dive in, Marsha. And, and it would be one word, just one word. Sure. Start there. Start I'm small. Start with authenticity. That's what I'm going to start with. Is I love it. Okay. Awesome. Now flip your page over. Make okay. a single authentic line. Okay. Seriously. Just can you get your hand on the page authentic? Okay. So it's just you. Yes. Do it. I did. <gasps> awesome. Okay. Flip the page over again. Okay. Throw that out of your mind. You did that. You did that one. Okay. Authenticity. That's what you're going for. Awesome. 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 So I want you to like look up to your highest ideal and pull down one word. Just, okay. That's related to this goal of authenticity. True. Awesome. Write it down. On the back? Yep. With your other words on the back. True. Okay. Flip over your page. Make a line circle drawing anything. What does true feel like? Is it a circle? Is it a square? Is it a triangle? Is it a line? Is it a squiggle? Is it four squiggles? And it can go anywhere? Anywhere. Okay. Okay. I'm done. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Next one. Flip over your page again. We're going to do this for all seven, girl. Okay. So we're going to look at what is your deepest, like, where is the resistance here? So look down below and say, what is the problem? What is the hard part? What is the nut or the kernel that has to crack? What's challenging my authenticity and me being most authentic in my life? Concern about what other people think about me. Ah, seeming or perception. Awesome. That's great. So write that down on the opposite side, right? And then flip it over and draw that. And you can, you can do it with a single line. You can do it with a squiggle. You can do it with a scratchle. You can do it with whatever you want. 
So, but on the back of it, I write down. That's right. Write down what uh, what other people think of me is holding me back. What other? Okay. And then. He got Elmo going on in the background. I love it. You I guys think it's hear awesome. It? Is it okay? <laughs> oh, honey, it's perfectly fine. You know, it's we all have lives and families. And I I you know, I it's I I work for a big corporation and we do everything online. And uh this is the first thing that I tell everyone who has a family, please don't apologize on video conference. You have a family, you have kids. If I'm not patient and I can't deal with that, that's my problem. Right. Your life and your family are gorgeous and they have a place and they belong and you're doing this because of them and for them and for you and vice versa. So you never need to apologize to me for, you know, kids make noise. They scream, they yell, they do things, they bounce, they burble, they they're adorable let them okay you're good you are all good all right awesome that was supposed to be a line or a picture or both yes there is there is no wrong answer you just have to have seven lines all together when you're done when i'm done it doesn't yeah right now that's right that's right exactly Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you could spend time like drawing a brick wall if you want to, right? Which actually is not a bad metaphoric idea, um, right? Yeah, absolutely. So now I want you to look behind you. Like, where does this, what's, what's pushing you into this? Where is this coming from, right? What's the history or provenance of this particular goal for your manifestation? Is it that you've never, you haven't been treated correctly, or is it that, you know, um, this authenticity has challenged other people's norms and that conflict socially was a problem? Whatever it is, you can formulate that in your mind. I don't need to know it. I just need to know that you know it, right? And flip over your page and say, the past of this situation is... In the past, I never felt like I fit in. Would that be? Yes. Okay. See here, I'm. I'm is that right? When you told yes, me, yes, that's so. right. No, that's perfect. In the past, I felt. I... Okay. And this is this is also an invitation to you. This is, um, I think, part of what Alex is struggling with and rewarding herself with in her struggle. And that is that those things most challenging in the past to you may actually be elements that compose the desired state. In other words, those things in the past may actually be keynote signs and billboards pointing you at your most authentic expression of self. So never overlook the possibility that even just shifting your perspective can alter what looks like a negative into a positive and what looks like a positive into a negative before you really approach your line. Or, and, and when you approach your line for this particular statement, I never felt like I fit in anywhere. What does that look like to you? Does that look like you always had a firm sense of self-gnosis? That was me. And that self wasn't very popular, <laughs> right? That was me. I was big, shiny personality. And let me tell you, I get in, I trigger people. I just do. I show up and people get fucking triggered. It's bizarre. Mm -hmm. And uh, they project their issues on me because I'm a big, bright personality. Right. Instead of actually seeing their own shit and realizing, oh, wow, I'm really responding to this dead thing. Ooh, sorry. 
you're not a terrible driver, right? <laughs> well, whatever. No, I, I literally got accosted <laughs> this week by someone in downtown Littleton who like chased me across the parking lot to scream at me at the top of his lungs about what a terrible driver I was because I was driving the speed limit. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and my tattoos and with your <laughs> tattooed head and your piercings and your <laughs> wait for it and your gender. <laughs> he lost um, words at that point, and he just was like anger explosively coming off of him, and I was like, gender. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, people. <sighs> right? Oh, honey. He's going through it, right? Mm. Yeah. Anyways, so I would invite you in really approaching your line now for that statement. I feel like I never fit in before, right? What is that going to wind up looking like to you? Are you the authentic part and other parts were in disharmony with you? Were you the part that was in disharmony? Where does, you know, what was that history in the most critical and compassionate view that you can give it and draw your line or make your picture. I'm trying, I, I'm having a hard time coming up with words for the most compassionate piece of that like basically that's a positive from the situation right instead of like yeah. you never fit in like something I never fit in because I'm so much better than everybody else no I'm just kidding <laughs> I I'm not gonna contradict that at all honey I think you're in a room of three people who would agree from our own perspectives yes absolutely yeah it was never us um never no. <laughs> i know i got lucky i got to go to a super awesome cool high school that embraced me doing weird things yeah. really you did yeah you, she did it really did <laughs> yeah she had a pretty it was cool the coolest thing oh, it was a cool school it really was they they let me have four months off of school to go train with a witch to go learn about witchcraft and occult magic and i had to write a thesis on how that's what i spent four months off school doing and then make a presentation about it in front of the whole school and the parents obviously yeah. this was not a public school <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i went to it was a charter school so it wasn't like a private school that cost a lot of money but it was a lottery system for me to be able to get it that's awesome. That yeah. is amazing. Very cool. This happens to be the witch that I trained with <laughs> during those four months. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. We had her in high school. Mm, yeah, she was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I dropped out when I was 15 because I just didn't belong <laughs> and i didn't know honey, things and I honey the, you, there are so many honorable roads yeah there are you know i i left home when i was 13 yeah, I am, I and then emancipated at 15 from my parents and did you right so i worked and to put myself through school so i i got you i got you girl i i feel that story yeah. deeply and uh what's nice about it right is that Marsha, you and I really come from a perspective of we were our own uh, support network. So that was had to be built in at the factory. You know, an ability to adapt to the circumstances, to support ourselves without the support of family, to, 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 to put us through, ourselves through it all. And though we made a lot of mistakes, girl. <laughs> Just a couple come on you know you come out a, a better person by burnishing your soul right against adversity right yeah because let me tell you you don't need to when the good times are rolling mm -mm. and uh marcia yeah the, there's a reason i went to a school that gave students four months off to go practice witchcraft 
<laughs> um, I went to an alternative school because regular school didn't work out for me. Right. Yep. So I just right. got lucky and I got into the cool school. Yeah. That's amazing. And look at you now, like you're well, doing what you love still. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All of this is you're just amazing so, too. So new to me. It's so new. Finding this academy was it was just a I don't know, it was so random and so cool. And I I love every single class that I take and I've got the astrology with Micah now and it's oh so good. good. Yeah. I'm so happy you feel that way. <laughs> You're amazing. And we are so lucky to have you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. So okay. Say for the positive part, because through all of that, like I, I always found a close friend, you know, I, and so good. Yeah. I still then, have because, because, and I, so let's grab that as who are my enemies, who are my allies. Okay. So let's b- burst that out and let's talk about enemies and allies. So okay. g- grab that experience and put that on the other side. I, I always found an ally or a friend, right? Yeah. In, in all, all of this adversity, I, you always found that it was the value of the, really what the value that got you through life and into success was friendship. Just having a co-partner, like a yeah. pilot, you know? Yeah, to- that's right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then flip over your page and bring in another line. Okay. What are you doing? Don't do that. Gross. <laughs> She's like filing her teeth and I'm going to let her. <laughs> my straight edge. It's all wet now. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, Okay, I got it. Awesome. Perfect. So flip over your page again and just point yourself at what remains, right? Um, Since we did allies, who were the enemies? What was the enemy? Was the enemy procrastination? Was the enemy lack of organization? Was the enemy too much organization? Was the enemy sacrificing your own needs to other people's needs? What, who was the enemy? Was the enemy? Was it a worthiness deal? With, which was mostly my problem. Most I of my problem was I worthiness. Think that's it too, yeah. yeah. Worthiness. Yeah. It's less worth, than the feeling. Of less yeah. Than that, that. Yeah. Feeling worthy is such a hard hurdle. Yeah, that's, okay, so enemy not feeling worthy. Awesome. Okay. And then flip over your page and there's there's another line. I think we only have two other points left. We have, um, future and we have where you where you are right now is really what's left and that's it okay and then you have a working sigil yay oh awesome okay so what one two three four five Mm -hmm. yep so we have we have two left and that is the future right so take a peek into the future now we're looking at concepts of authenticity right we we already know for anything to be successful there must be measures of success so i would encourage you to also kind of wrap yourself around what are some smart goals i can wrap around this too however the before you even get there right? You can still cast this sigil towards authenticity. And one of the things you just want to do is the, you, can't in, you can't anticipate where your foot should fall for the future 
on this journey. However, there is a future to this journey into being fully authentic. So think of it in the term of a hope or a carrot, right? The carrot that you get the, in front of the donkey to get the donkey to go, right? Um, that, that kind of a carrot, a uh, reward. What reward will you be able to stand in or have or possess with a greater de degree, if not the greatest degree of personal authenticity? Okay, so I've always wanted to go dancing. Okay, I've been sober for three years and I used to love getting, you know, fucked up and then go out dancing. Sure. And so without the, you know, alcohol now, it's like I miss dancing, but the fear of others. So is that, would that be it? Something like a goal? You're, you're getting there. Yeah. So part of the goal would be, you know, you get to be able to go dancing without the yeah. hindrance of your addiction being, uh, now, I mean, we all know anyone who's approached addiction or mental illness or cycles of self, self discretion, just self destruction. We all know, we all know you can't get away from your alcoholism, your drug addiction, your self castigation. You can't get away from it. Right. So you're still going to go to a venue and they there still will be people and there will be drinking. And those oh, just work. are. I yeah, just, those are just the nature of the things. That's right. Yeah. Right. But what you need is the atmosphere, the joviality, the physical yeah. work of actually dancing, which is awesome. And a cardio event. I'm right there with you, girl, because I'm an EDM guy. Right. I love raves. And uh, I, I will dance you and your kids and your friends under the fucking table all night, all night. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. That's I'll show up at nine and I'll go until six morning, yep. six in the morning. You can't That's walk right. The next day because your legs. That's right. Because your legs are trashed and your feet are killing you. Yep. That's right. Absolutely, and love it. I want to do that again so bad. <laughs> Good. Then you know, put that on your page. Being able to just dance. That is gorgeous. <laughs> to me, that's like the symbolism of authenticity for myself. Yeah. Like, yes, to just be, you know, like we've all seen that person out in public. Yeah. Just dances yeah. Yeah. They, they don't they, care that people are looking at them. I, I crave that. That's right. Absolutely. It's beautiful when you see it and when you, and you see it very seldom. Yeah. I totally agree. And yeah. it's a, it's a, a gorgeous thing to see someone uninhibitedly expressing themselves with yes. their body. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So jot that down in words, flip okay. over your page, make okay. a line or drawing that represents that. Fancy. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, baby? Oh, I got it. <laughs> She's like, ah, I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm done. Awesome. One last one to go. Okay. So flip over your page. And just take a moment and like, really, Marcia, just like breathe in, breathe out, let it go. <sighs> Throw away ideas, expectations. Do it again. <sighs> Let it go, let it all out. Let your interactions with your baby in and out. Let me in and out. Let the sun fall on your face. Let yourself sit there. Feel the weight of your body, feel the weight of her body. Feel the table in front of you and the lamp behind you. The space that you're in and the table you're at. Feel your beautiful face, feel your hips, your body, feel your back and where it is, feel, you know, how, how are you? How's your posture? How's your hydration level? 
where are you at? Are you sweaty? Is that good? Is that like a slightly good sweaty feel? Is that an uncomfortable sweaty feel? Where are you with all this? And for this authenticity idea, where are you right now? And pick just a single word that describes that, if you can, and write it down. I put progress. Good. That's beautiful. And flip over your page with progress in mind. That's your next line or drawing. And the last one. So if you want this line to do the work of coordinating or cohering the other lines, does it move through them? Does it wrap around them? Does it hold or contain them? What does it do? What is progress's role with these other lines and drawings? And make the line, make the drawing. Okay. okay. You've got it? Yeah. I am so excited. That's awesome, girl. <laughs> okay. Now, one of the things that I do with my sigils. So you have your sigil. There it is. It's right in front of you on your page. So <laughs> that's right. Yay. So the <laughs> casting, you have the two different methods of the casting. You do the, uh, either the square breathing right? Box breathing or use the masturbatory technique, which I would highly encourage. Okay. So uh, you know that you need three journal entries, one for each of your castings, right? Okay. Let me write. Can I write that down really quick? You can. Absolutely. Three journal. Say that again. Entries one after each okay. casting, because you'll cast this sigil three times. So, and always leave a day in between. That's why these classes are spaced the way they are, so that you have enough time to do three full castings with one day of rest in between. Okay. Right. I'm going to go, I would go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or tonight, or Sunday, Tuesday. That's right. You work it into your calendar so that you get three castings and three journal entries. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm. Yep. And the casting is so simple. You know, you just during your energetic work and your flow and your breathing and your intention, just hold the image or picture of the sigil in your mind. Okay. You can have it in front of you if you yeah. like, standing up on a mirror or, 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 however you want. But the very last thing your mind should latch on to before you release yourself into the oblivion of orgasm is that sigil before you cast it into the nothingness that is your post-orgasmic fugue. Okay. Right. And by fugue, it's that state of mind that's hazy and relaxed and flowy and doesn't focus on any one thing or detail, but allows itself to float. Right. Okay. Some people fall asleep immediately after. That's perfectly fine. Absolutely normal and part of the work. Okay. okay. And well, the I'm only. Just, I'm, so I'm picturing my sigil yep and just like coming up with the like the feelings of it the good right yeah absolutely. absolutely yeah absolutely and really you can just come up with the image of the sigil now if you wanted to augment the work with the whole Polynesian visualization and get yourself to the place where you see the thing already accomplished 
yes. period, standing in it. If you want to go that far, girl, go that far. Okay. Right. And, but, you know, really it's an erotic experience and should be in that kind of a space. And here's right. why. Can I have because, an orgasm while I'm thinking about being authentic? Well, maybe. I don't know. Yes, absolutely. Of course you can. Everyone can. Right. And being authentically erotic, my God, there are whole workshops in just that. How do you be authentically erotic? Yeah. Yeah. My God. I mean, my God. The, the most suppressed aspect of self? Yes. How do you right. be authentic with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, girl. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely. And bring it into that space because that's where it's a liminal space already. The erotic is a liminal space. It's a mental space where anything is potential, right? So it takes you out of the frame of an operational universe that has details that have to happen and habits that have to happen for you to succeed and gets you into a place where you can just free form, organize idea, thought, feeling into an already manifest state and then put erotic tension into it and you're feeding that energy into your sigil okay the casting is where you hand it to god and say a thousand copies please okay does this make sense yes absolutely yeah 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 so, so do I, and i keep do i keep it yes you will Okay. Yeah. Keep all your sigils and okay. keep your journal entries around your sigils because they'll tell you really when you go back and you look at, and that's why I do best of big chief, because just journaling your work doesn't really tell you the story behind the manifestation. The only way you really understand the story behind the manifestation is when you look at the larger pattern of after the sigil is already done. Okay. Yeah. So three castings between now and next class and uh, make your journal entries, three journal entries, one for each casting. Please feel free to share your sigil online. Um, I would love to see it. And you know how I um, post all those things on the Facebook group? I'm going to not explain myself. <laughs> yeah, that's, I want to see, hold on. Okay, hang on. Let me... I know, I want to see too. Oh. <gasps> Oh, it's so cool. No, that's it. awesome. See, and what I love about it is this is going to be really easy for you to hold in your mind during your casting. That's really the essence and power behind sigilization is your ability to imbue the symbol with as much meaning and intention and energy as possible before casting it. It's gorgeous. It's awesome. It's it will beautiful. work. I love the journaling piece for a minute. What's that? Can we talk about the journaling piece for a minute? Yeah. Do I just do I just go through each line and like can you can you just tell me what I what I really sure, want? Sure, absolutely. You you can do it like that. You can do it. So here's what I would I'll give you this challenge. How about this challenge? Okay. Do your casting. Describe what you went through during your casting. Okay. Okay. So I got distracted in the beginning and then I lost the train. And then I came back because of the picture of the butterfly. And that was the part that like really did me because then the butterflies landed on my nipples and that got me aroused again. And then, okay. uh, right. So all of that post process is the process. This is where you begin to have a dialogue with your own desire and the universe gets to give you answers about it. Oh. Yeah, this, this is where the communication like opens up, right? You know, Karina, one of my teachers was really amazing in this statement. Um, you know, that uh, one of the prayers that we do is called a hot prayer. And it's you, you gather energy and life force. <sighs> and then <sighs> give it to your own God soul and allow your God soul to transform that into whatever perfect medicine is needed at this moment to make you right in all ways and reveal to you what is not. 
right in all ways right and a prayer goes with it you know who is this flower above me what is the work of this god meaning me i would know myself and all my parts and ha is actually a polynesian word it means four and there's a lot of speculation in our circles about why it's called a ha breath and why it's called four and why has it got to be black right so it's <laughs> in, RuPaul, it's in rupaul's hot. words right you said so, it's called hot breath i'm sorry ha you... ha h-a h-a yeah and i mean ha means four literally in the means for okay. pollination yeah and um yeah it's, it's a simple prayer to like bring all of your souls back in alignment and contiguity with your body and um I was talking about Thorn. No, I was talking about um, Anar. Um, where were we? The statement that she said that really helped you to um, the hot prayer, or well, that really it was before that. About, like, yeah, that was the ex- in energy and casting. <gasps> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So um, the. The work really just needs to be have this image in your mind that you just wrote down with seven lines, right? Or seven pictures. Have that in your mind. Create the energy and the power at that moment, the height of strength and power at the moment where you can no longer fight off the orgasm. Hurl all that energy into the image of the sigil, into the oblivion of the orgasm. Okay. That's it. That's the whole work. Now you're journaling. So I'm going to give you an assignment. Describe it all as much as you can. The, you know, what was the erotic fantasy? Was it a boy? Was it a girl? Was it a shim? Was it, you know, um, I don't want these details. Don't give them to me. Don't give them to Alex. Don't give them to anyone. This is your private work. This is what you do in your journal. This is your journey. And these things are not literal either. What they are are ways for the divine to talk to you through symbol. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that I pictured every everything you pictured okay. and was it easy or was it hard and you know I had these 40,000 distractions you know what that's important news if you felt like there were 40,000 distractions keeping you from a 6 minute masturbatory session if even that no <laughs> Right, right. No, I understand what it is to be a mom. Right. If you're you're lucky to get three minutes a day. Right. Right. When you're not exhausted and covered in puke and ready to like (laughs) fall on the bed and exhausted and die for a day. Right. Right. No, I get it. So I get it. Right. And but describe as much of that as uh, unpack everything. You know, I felt this weird feeling, or maybe you felt nothing. Maybe you were, I was an ice queen and completely numb and I couldn't get it right. All of that is in, is information and news about your process. The only thing that's essential is that you cast the sigil. So if you fail the first time, do it again until you cast. Awesome. Journal your experience. Do I want to journal right after it? No, you want to give it to give it to some people fall asleep. So I'm like, that's right. That's right. That's right. You want to give it room. And that's why I say there should be a day between casting. So do your casting next day at some point, journal your experience. Okay. So it's not, don't wait two days because we all know we can remember yesterday. We can bring up the details and the minutia and the, the things and the, this and the, oh, that's right. And then there was this thing that's right. Right. And you can jot it down. If you wait two days or more, it's gone, 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 gone. Right. So journal the next day for your big chief. And then at at the end of the class, what, one of the last things you will be doing is going back through any of the sigils you did for this class and all of the journaling. And you'll create a mind map with the, words from all of your journal not not really taking out the content just the words that spoke and that ring and that are powerful and true and that manifest okay right 
and you'll pull those out and create, uh, I don't care if it's a word cloud, I don't care if it's a collage, I don't care if it's a poem, I don't care if it's a song lyric, but it's gonna be something that okay. you're gonna, even if you string these words together into a Zen koan, okay. awesome. But that's gonna be your, that's gonna be your best of Big Chief. That's your presentation to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. There you go, girl. You are all set. So I, okay. So this is my first sigil. Yep. And that's all I need. I don't need to worry about any other thing right now. Just no. I, yeah. This is. Yeah. That, that's really it. Yeah. You know, I mean, okay. I gave, I gave you a, a mental framework that you can use to say, I'm working on stability here in authenticity. Okay. Right. Yep. Awesome. And okay. you know that you have allies and enemies yes you sure do and you'll start seeing them so start watching for them you'll see that you have a highest ideal and a, a outcome that you want and you'll begin seeing all the things that are standing in your way and that are challenges for you to overcome you're also going to understand you're going to start to really process the past of this situation and look into the future of this situation okay right the earth, air, fire, water, the spirit and heart and center, the guiding star above, and the infernal depths of hell below. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I always think of it. Heaven, all the beauty. Hell, all the things that I use to mire myself. Right? And then surrounded by my friends, earth, air, fire, and water who are my allies in this work. And yours too. Yeah. So call on them if you want them. Have an orgy, gangbang, awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do often and frequently in my <laughs> temple. Yep, it's often, oh, you're here too? I think I can fit you. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad I came. Good. I'm so glad you came too. Yeah. Yay. Uh. Yay. Awesome. Look at that. And we are on time, girl. <laughs> yes. How is that yes. happening? Yeah. Okay. So I will prepare my schedule and I will uh, put it online. Um, I usually judge mine, um, but that's just me. You if do you mine? want judge. I like judge it. Oh, I take it and I flip it over and rub it and smack it. And no, <laughs> I um, see, typically what I I what I like to do for my sigils is I'll take a photograph of it. Like I'll clean up my lines, get it where I want it. I'll take a photograph of it, and then I'll start processing it. Right in like, okay, you know, I have I have stickers, I have um, backgrounds, I have colors, I have. Uh, augmenting, like oh, I can put it, push it through a magic filter and suddenly it looks like a Picasso painting and, ooh, ooh, and okay. I can do this and this and this and play with these and draw out for me uh, an image that be can become electric and electrifying in my contemplation of it. Does it raise the hair on the back of my neck? And if it does... <gasps> That's it. I want it. I want it to be powerful. Yeah, because this doesn't raise the hair on the back of my neck. But <laughs> well, play with that, it. Yeah, you know, yeah. you yeah, you, yeah. you. I mean, you have like these parts. You have gorgeous parts. You know, the butterfly is exquisite, and you, we all know butterflies are gorgeous, right? And um, you you have that diamond, which is like, oh, oh my God, that's <laughs> like be as really Alex was working, she tried to show you with her image, she was working with diamond beef in a prior yeah. sigil class. I'll decorate mine and stuff too. Here, hold on, let me stop the filter in the background. Okay, so you can see mine, but. Uh, yep, uh-huh, yep, Oh wow. exactly. Yeah, and so. Decorate them, you can decorate, oh. them. I decorate my notes and stuff too, or yep. like the journal entries. 
and then it makes you read them more, which then makes you like contemplate them more. You can decorate them with stickers. That's oh. right. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And, and that's what I try and do. Them more. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anything that gets you to engage in the content as itself an object of fascination is going to pull your attention into yes. that symbol and make it more powerful for casting. So rearrange your line. You have your lines and your motifs and your parts. Okay. Well, what happens if we put the diamond on the top of the stick and that's part of the wing of the butterfly and that's part of this other thing. And yes, all of those. I bought a bunch of stickers and stuff for, I was going to start. Hey, peekaboo. I was going to start uh, bullet journaling back in April, yes, but I haven't gotten right. around to it. So now yeah. I've, I've already got a journal. I've got stickers. Perfect. I've got all the fun stuff, and I'm just going to use that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it really does help, too, because when I feel, like, proud of the notes and I feel like they look really pretty, then I go back and I read them more. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is. And then you're like, that's not right. Scratch. Yeah. <laughs> change. Yes, that's right. And then you start yeah. to see patterns more because then you're that's like right. decorating all your old notes and then you realize like how you transformed and how things changed. Yes, and where your perspective started and where it is now. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely true. You know, nine, nine tenths of any spiritual practice is really just self-observation and drawing conclusions that are not ego-driven about what you observe. I know, honey. Right now, she's so tired. (laughs) Like laughing, crying. (laughs) So that's the class, guys. Thank you so so much. much. When is the next class? Is it on Sunday also? It's going to be on Monday. Next Monday. Okay. There are eight. There are eight days apart, so they'll rotate forward through the through the following weeks. Is it going to be at seven thirty? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Always at 7 30. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yay. Awesome. I hope to see you there. I can't yeah, wait to see sure. you next week, Shantai. I'm going to post my of course, honey. soon. <laughs> can't wait. All right, honeys. You guys All right. Bye. Night. Thank you so much again. I appreciate it. Of course. Oh, yeah. You betcha. Right. And fun. I can't wait to hear what, what comes of it all. Yeah. Me so neither. I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Okay, guys. Bye. Bye.